Okay, hello everybody. We just have to get it up on the live stream here on Facebook. And we're going live in like three seconds. I do believe it's already started. Perfect. Hello, everybody. It is Laura Eisenhower. I hope you all are doing wonderful. We have come together again, Raquel Spring and Seth Leaf Przanski and myself. Uh, we love to come together right before the new moons. And I know you all know a lot about who both of they of them are. And it's all going to be in the description. But just to say a few words, Raquel Spring is a fourth generational astrologer. She does events, speaking events, uh, does session work and workshops. Seth Lee Przanski, he's the author of The Fight to Enlight. He does a weekly meditation on Tuesdays. And he's got an unbelievable platform that he just created that you want to check out and subscribe to. So thanks, guys, for being here today with me. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah. So new moon, September 2nd, right? That's yeah. your apartment. <laughs> yeah. September well, Mark, 2nd. About, yeah, the upcoming new moon, <laughs> anything leading up to the new moon. Oh, my God. Yeah, let's, let's dive into it. I all. mean... You know, I want to I want to pull up the chart just to give everyone a little visual here. Um, but before I want to just talk a little bit about the energies leading up to the new moon, because to me, nothing is isolated. You know, everything is interconnected. And so the new moon is a byproduct of the energies that we're coming from and paving the way for the next ones coming in. So, you know, just for anybody new here watching us, we get together once a month all three of us, and we just have a little chat on the energies of the moment and of the month ahead. So we use the new moon as a basis for that. And then we just talk about the current energies in general and, and the, the month ahead. So I, I just find it fascinating that just a day before, I believe it's a day before the new moon or a couple days before the new moon in Virgo, we have the planet Uranus that stations retrograde. Now, this is a really big deal because the whole month of August has been highlighting Uranus. And whenever Uranus, the planet Uranus is, is highlighted, we are looking at very radical shifts. Now, these shifts, they have to do with... Um, you know, unexpected events. Uranus is a very volatile energy. Things happen all of a sudden, and it can really feel quite disruptive when we least expect something out of the blue happens. And he does have a very strong effect on us. On the other hand, Uranus, who is known for being the disruptor, he is also the great awakener. So whether he is using chaos or whether he is using, you know, aha moments, he is the planet of illumined thinking, you know, the illumined leader. And it's I feel like it's important to start with that because ultimately everything that is happening in our current reality and of course in the month ahead as well of September is about this great awakening that's happening. So it does feel like a very rude awakening, but I don't think that we would wake up any other way. So, you know, as a collective speaking, uh, this, this, you know, all these energies on Uranus have been very purposeful. The full moon, the prior full moon that we just had, you know, two weeks ago from, from the time of the new moon, um, it really highlighted Uranus in an incredible way. It was an Aquarius full moon, which means the ruler of Aquarius is Uranus. At the time of the full moon, the full moon itself was uh, creating a T-square with Uranus. So a double emphasis on Uranus there. And now we have Uranus stationing retrograde. So the energies are extremely volatile. And I just want to start off with that because from this point forward, we really are looking at a, a good six months of Uranus energies. Um, so honestly, as we lead into the new moon, to me, it's a continuation of these energies. Oh, yeah. I just wanted to add to that. It's interesting how Pluto is dipping back into Capricorn. Yep. And then Uranus going retrograde, it's almost like, okay, now's the chance to process all these events that have been sort of shattering to people's belief systems as Uranus is like the wrecking ball 
yeah. um, of the old paradigm. And then Pluto dips back. Like what else do you need to process, release or look at uh, before Pluto goes direct for 20 years in Aquarius? So it's like, okay, well, Uranus will go inward and you know, maybe think about what those shakeups that happen in the month of August um, have guided us to understand as far as like messages from our higher self, the different synchronicities, the things that are breaking apart and falling apart that we might misunderstand. Mm -hmm. And what's so wonderful about uh, the month ahead is, and the new moon is, you know, this strong Virgo energy right before the nodal axis shifts and eclipse happens on the 17th. So we'll, we'll d dive into more of that as we move along. But yeah, I love that you said all that. Yeah. Um, I'm feeling like, oh, my nervous system. Yeah. Just feeling like the need to like rest a lot. And, um, I haven't really felt like the, the, the shocks and upheavals as much because I am already very Uranian, mm -hmm. <laughs> but, okay. but, um, just managing the nervous system is always a thing just when it comes to one more day in the life of Laura. <laughs> I mean, I'm, I'm like used to that energy, but, um, <laughs> yeah, but yeah. Um, having to anchor it and ground it like, and, and take care of the physical vessel, you know, yeah. when it really lights up, I don't know. What, what, what are you experiencing Seth? Like, do you, do you find that? Cause I know, you know, you, you guys both, you know, have a connection to the Uranian energy um, where awakening events happen in your life. Uh, yeah. Maybe earlier on <clears throat> how it feel like in the here and now. Well, it's interesting because the meditation that we literally we were like, we finished three minutes before we came on here. It was about basically relaxing the nervous system and just letting mm -hmm. that part of ourself, mm -hmm. because everything around is so chaotic, you know? But I want to ask you guys, because are there retrogrades happening right now? Mercury retrograde. <laughs> yeah. He's actually stationing. I mean, it's been retrograde most of the month. He's stationing direct tomorrow. Because you know what? Yeah. Last week, my I have two computers, just in case yeah. one goes. It we're went a week. Yeah, that's exactly. We're kind of yeah. There's a few. There's uh, quite my a bunch computer of too. Yeah. Really? I, so my I, computer I broke. Buy, I need to buy an, a new one. It's just yeah. Then the other one broke. Both my the other morning. I'm like, oh, yeah. you gotta be kidding me. And I'm, <laughs> I have all these appointments online this week too. Oh, but so many people missed appointments this week. Is oh. Crazy. Oh yeah, we, we we had major storms. We had hail storms. Mm -hmm. uh, my power got knocked out twice. So that's like totally Uranus. That's your yeah. I was thinking about that schedule. Mm -hmm. Just real quick though, uh, Mercury's retrograde, uh, Saturn's retrograde, Neptune's retrograde, Pluto's retrograde, Chiron's retrograde. I know, Ooh. just Jupiter, just missing Jupiter. So what? So, so yeah, keep going with that. Well, now that you said Jupiter. If Jupiter isn't retrograde, does that mean that it has a stronger impact on us? Um, well, um, that, so not yet. Jupiter, I said, is the only one missing. Oh, I see. Okay. It's, yeah. it, uh, mine over here doesn't say Jupiter's retrograde. No. She said about right. it. Well, it's interesting because Mars and Jupiter in Gemini, with when Mercury was retrograding, you, you've got mm -hmm. planets in Gemini, which Mercury rules going direct. So, you know, it's kind of yeah. like a lot to say, but like, Ooh, time to go inward and kind of pushing, you know, against that. I think, you know, the Uranus shock might be like, Whoa, um, maybe, you know, people that just got a blast of inspiration, just felt derailed before, like they were wanting to say something to somebody or do something. Um, I don't know. What are your thoughts Raquel on that? On what exactly? The, what are we oh, talking Oh, just, about? yeah, Mercury retrograde in Virgo. I definitely feel puts a lot of attention on health and wellness. But Mercury you also know, being ruler of Gemini. Um, yeah. Oh, yeah, totally. I mean, this was definitely a wild card. I feel like many unexpected twists and turns. That's what I've been calling it, the twists and turns. And, you know, people have been experiencing the twists and turns in many different ways. Um, I personally have felt a really good energy from this. Uh, Jupiter is actually exactly conjunct my 19 Gemini sun. So, um, you know, I feel very fortunate. I'm definitely having a lot of open, open doors and things speeding up for me. But there's definitely been a lot of twists and turns. Like Mercury is the trickster, you know, 
You never know what tricks he has up his sleeve. It's like one day, yes, the other day, no, or oops, now I changed my mind kind of thing. But it's, it's just a very mind boggling energy with this. But I think it's interesting that you brought up the aspect of health because I've been really speaking into this energy uh, recently now that the sun has just entered Virgo and Vesta is also in Virgo. Now, interestingly enough, I don't know about you guys, but I've seen an astounding amount of people getting sick in the last week or two mm. and health really being a priority for us all right now. You know, like our health is just top priority during this time. Yeah. Um, and Virgo is known for being uh, an energy of of health um, and wellness. So I I really, I don't want to underestimate this Virgo season and the Virgo new moon with this incredible emphasis on health. Oh, definitely. And I feel uh, just the need to press the pause button and, and take care of the self to yeah. prepare for what's ahead. I, yeah. I think, you know, people yeah. who are really putting out a lot of information, really invested in helping others kind of wake up or process what's going on in the world, or um, I don't know, who feel really strong in their conviction or the, their opinions. Uh, yeah. it's like, wow, that might be taxing on the body. What about, you know, the need to embody and take care of the body so that the vehicle of our physicality and consciousness can withstand a lot of exactly well like said. That's coming down the pike and um well said well said yeah this yeah new moon it's like what with, with the isn't it in opposition to saturn and pisces It'll be yeah like that 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 was actually one of the main things I, I wanted to focus on um you know it is the closest aspect to the new moon it's this opposition to saturn and I find it pretty synchronistic, just from a little bit of a technical perspective. I'll share the technical aspects a little bit, um, and then we can just kind of harp on that for, for a moment, if you like. But I find this, there is a huge focus on Saturn for several reasons. One, the new moon is happening in opposition to Saturn. Number two, Saturn is the ruler of Capricorn. And as you rightfully mentioned, um, Laura, just a day before Pluto re-enters Capricorn. So maybe we can talk a little bit about that too. I know a lot of people are very interested in this, but it is this double emphasis on Saturn. Now, interestingly enough, there is a relationship, there is a connection as well with Mercury being that Mercury is the ruler of Virgo, okay, which is where the new moon is at. And when we look at the full moon, the new moons and full moons, they're, they're like, they go together. You know, when, when I look at the new moon, I always look at the full moon to see what is culminating from that new moon. And we can talk about the full moon separately if you'd like. And the new moon will be the, an incredible lunar eclipse. Um, this will be the first eclipse in Pisces. So, but that's another topic, but I, I want to show you something. If we go to the full moon, here. Um, here's the full moon happening, which is a lunar eclipse. We also see that by this time, Mercury, who is the ruler of the new moon, has, you know, entered Virgo and is at pretty much an exact opposition with Saturn. So there's just all these interesting synchronicities between the planets reflecting their, their energy on Saturn. Um, and I know that I think the full moon is a separate topic as well, this lunar eclipse, but I think my primary focus that I want to focus on right now is this, um, let me just go back here, is this focus on Saturn. Now, I would love to hear your opinion, and I would love to share just a few phrases on my opinion, followed by the Sabian symbol for this new moon, which I find very synchronistic with the opposition to Saturn. So Saturn, as I've been saying, I've been describing recently, there's also been an extraordinary focus on Saturn already since the last full moon, when we also had a T-square between Saturn, Jupiter, and Venus in Virgo. There is this highlight with the Saturn and Jupiter square that is currently happening. And it's actually a square that will take place for about nine to 10 months from now. So it's a long, long square. 
this is a very necessary part of the dismantling of the old system and people pushing through into the new paradigms. So this is where a lot of the uh, freedom oriented energies can start piercing through, through the square. Okay. You're and saying so the Jupiter Saturn square is for about nine months. Yes. Until July of next year. So honestly, I mean, about a whole year, seriously, that we're looking at this, this square. And this square is actually going to be the, the underlying factor between all of the upcoming upheavals in the world. Uh, very necessary one and very good ones, too. You know, I don't want anyone to be frightened because even, you know, worst case scenario, something happens, let's say, to the economy, which is a possibility. I mean, you have to, the old needs to make way for the new. Uh, this is not like the old the, the previous times that we've had, uh, uh, you know, recessions or, or problems, like this is a whole new paradigm that's ready to come in. And we have so many solutions that are right there waiting to come in. So it's not like we're going to be on the streets begging or raiding places for, you know, for food to eat. It, it's not like that. It really is just a transition from the old systems that don't work anymore to the new. But anyway, this is a much bigger energy that is going to be paving the way for 2025 the rest of 2024 and 2025. So to me, the focus on Saturn currently is the, it's the focus on the breaking away from the old. Saturn represents the patriarchal st structures, the, the father archetype, the rules, the boundaries, right? The laws, the systems in place, the authorities ruling those laws. So uh, Jupiter as well. Jupiter is very much, that's why he's highlighted as the second planet in an aspect with a new moon, you know, the square. But Saturn really is that old aspect of the laws and the systems that are no longer serving us. So when we're looking at an individual, from an individual perspective, what does this mean for me? I'm really having everybody pay attention to what is your participation in the process? Where are you ready to say no to the outdated patriarchal models. This could be in your personal life in many different ways. It could be inside of you and behaviors that you have held on to, as well as behaviors that you've willingly submitted yourself to, that you now are with this aspect of waking up, you're realizing they no longer work. So fascinating, fascinatingly enough, the Sabian symbol for this, new moon um, in Virgo, I, I checked it out and it says, a bride with her veil snatched away. This symbol implies the issue of unveiling oneself in some way. And you or someone else can no longer hide behind a pretense or hide your light. You're likely to be faced with the moment of moving into a new life and a new sense of identity. Perhaps there's the feeling that you or somebody is not quite ready to give themselves completely to a relationship or a situation, but they do not really have much choice. If one doesn't go willingly, they'll most likely be pushed forward until they finally take the plunge. I mean, you can't make this up. It is, I, when I read this, I was like, no way, you gotta be kidding me. Because uh -huh. this is literally the description, like we can't hide our light anymore. We are being pushed to make these radical shifts in our life and to own our authentic identity, which is really based on the soul. And you know, and these concepts of the soul. So there is no more compromise. And that's just the reality we're in. The more we try to stick to the old ways of living, the more we it's all going to backfire on us. So that's what the focus on Saturn is all about to me. Totally love it. Any, really? any thoughts, Seth, before I, I share some thoughts? Yeah, I was going to say, if we were meant to be naked, we would have been born that way. Oh, wait, we were born that way. That's kind of what it sounds like. What we're kind of saying, right? Like it never grows old, Seth. Out. I love that one. <laughs> right? I but mean, it's talk true. about a stripping of identity. It really is. Yeah. It's it. We're, we're stripping our old identity only to reveal a new one, and this new one is 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 meant to be free. 
free to just be ourselves and not have to conform to what other people want us to do. Um, it really is a place of being responsible for your own choices and your own consequences. This is the true definition of being a creator. And from that place, we can be leaders. Absolutely. Yeah, no, really well said. And so just spot on. Um, Saturn, it's so interesting, you know, in this opposition. It's like old Saturn rules, authority, and what how it's manifesting in the world today, like tyranny. We got this Virgo energy with the focus being on health as it moves into the South Node arena. We're going to reflect on what our physical body is showing us. And as we move into the North Node, what belief systems have we adopted that are actually harming our health? Is it really yeah. our truth? Because anything that's a programming is not going to help our body to thrive. It's going to get more and more addicted to the inversions that are presented in the world. And with this square with Jupiter, it's like uh, that tension of, are you really going to go along with this anymore? Um, and, and, and that tension and that like breakthrough that's going to happen as Pluto moves into Aquarius of this rebirth of like, oh my gosh, I can think for myself. I can be my authentic self. Saturn then like raises its vibration into self-mastery and what rules and limitations do you want to place upon yourself so that you can thrive so that you can make choices that are coming from your own disciplines that you know are going to be good for you instead of eating bugs, instead of taking jabs, instead of, um, you know, going along with whatever outward solution there is when our relationship with mother earth and our own soul knows exactly what it needs. So it's mm -hmm. kind of like what false flags and psyops are going to be presented uh, in this world of getting bombarded with information and where is that Neptune uh, and movement of Saturn into Aries beginning to help us um, yeah. you know, break free from that false kind of relationship it's 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 a beautiful transition you know really um and i think uh once that breakthrough happens we are like containers the law of structure of saturn for the multi-dimensional neptune to be so embodied in the physical vessel that if we can have a boundary to our dreams and visions and not allow anything to infect that space, we will be manifesting something really beautiful. Mm -hmm. uh, and, and, and it takes a lot because like you're saying with that old Saturn energy, we're talking ancestral patterns. We're talking unconscious energy blocks. We're talking um, insecurities and fears and things that are constantly being lit up that we don't even understand the source of, we wouldn't even think, Oh, is that a patriarchal program? That might just be a lack of self-worth that was coming exactly. from that was passed down generation to generation. So with Pluto square Chiron, it's like everything that hurts that big ouch is an opportunity um, for a transformation into, you know, your ability to, you know, be sovereign and self-sufficient in your own capacity to heal, to think, and to be the skipper of your own ship. And, uh, and, and and lead by example and say, yo, I can break that dependency bond or these belief systems that are causing more harm than good. And the body's going to be the most important thing to check in with, with that Virgo South node. So it's kind yeah. of my thoughts. I, I find it interesting that at this time, um, there's such a massive focus on the three outer planets. One, Uranus, which we started the conversation with, massive focus on Uranus. Um, actually since July. Um, so, and then Pluto, now Pluto re-entering Capricorn and a uh, huge focus on Pluto and Neptune as well, being that Neptune will be the ruler of the next lunar eclipse, the eclipse in Pisces. And all three of them are actually making a perfect um, aspect to each other where uh, Neptune is at the midpoint. So all three of them are in perfect aspect to each other by by sextile and trine. Pluto and, and it hasn't been that way for a long Uranus. time. There was that massive Uranus square Pluto. Um, lots of... Yeah, yeah. Like, Uranus is, is trine Pluto. Yeah. yeah, but like back in 2018, 19, or like before all that, that square yeah. is yeah. pretty interesting. 
Oh yeah, so absolutely. Yeah, there are so different nice, ways. Like all, you know, the diff the different aspects will bring slightly different energies, but there's still connections. I think I think ultimately, whether it's a trine or a square, um, the most important thing that is that these three planets they have to do with our evolution. So yeah. they are beyond the human physical personality and what we can control. Uh, this is really an aspect that's coming in from spirit we have no say on it absolutely oh, no exactly. say from a human perspective so it's it's really important that they're all three of them highlighted at this point which means that there are these energies that are literally beyond human doing that beyond are in control that are coming in into the right picture. and and aligning with that is the great healing i mean even people that were born uh when those energies had tense aspects yeah. It was yeah. just the tension of the breakthrough. It was just the tension of, yes. um, you know, things reaching ahead. And yeah. like you said, you know, squares aren't to be feared. You know, trying aspects are more harmonious, more grace and ease with all that. But the squares like get your attention. And mm -hmm. so it was kind of like, all right, let's crack through this dark Saturn. And now, you know, the blossoming, you know, with yes. the Neptune, the Aries, the, the yeah. Saturn, it's like, yeah. All they have right now is to infect our creative channels with belief systems and constantly giving them that loose or giving them that dream energy, that creative energy that they don't personally have. So yeah. it's just like, I always see like the bifurcation as a breakup. It's a divorce. Like, see you. Like, we're done. <laughs> There's so much more to like embrace. And, um, but that's really wild about those three getting along and it's like you know when people are in their head a lot and i think that's very much the mercury energy um the higher mind of uranus the creative imagination of neptune the transformative power of pluto um and what it, is what are your thoughts laura on pluto going back into capricorn even though it's only for about a month or so it's it's still um there's a lot of people that have been asking about this what are your thoughts I think it's just like dipping your foot back into, you know, are you still in agreement to something that you want to like dissolve? Um, what, where are you constantly hitting your head against uh, an authority figure, an obstacle, mm -hmm. um, uh, something that is in a power over you? Um, where, where are you with that? Are you uh, able to manifest and birth your own vision that that you can ground in a structured way uh for it to um you know surface as uh like a platform whether it's a healing center whether it's something online whether it's you know something in your home like where where you know can you begin to harness that energy um before it moves into a place where you're going to feel you're in charge of your own domain and and nobody else is telling you what to do and how to do it. Like mm -hmm. dipping back into that is going to be different for everybody. For some, yeah. it's like, wow, okay, I, I'm ready to leave that career. I'm ready to leave that relationship. I'm ready to end that agreement for others. Yeah, yeah. Like, what have what you not process. like done that you still need to do in order yeah. to resolve something that is still holding you back? Or um, was there a step that you needed to take in order to anchor something that is holding space for you to emerge in the way that you feel called to emerge in, in this time, as far as what, you know, you're here to do as a soul. So yeah. definitely a well, mixed bag. What are your thoughts? Well said. Yeah. And I'm just thinking of the, of the Sabian symbol where it says, if one doesn't go willingly, they will probably be pushed forward. It's exactly that. Like we have our time, right. To take that step. Some people have already done it. Other people are in the process, but I think this new moon is really marking that time. Like there's no more waiting. So either you go willingly or the universe is going to push you forward. And by pushing you forward, that means that many things will come to the light. Maybe things that you don't want necessarily others to see because it's things that you've been hiding underneath the rug and trying to get away with, but it's just no longer going to um, work. So it, it is a time for us to just willingly let go of the old ways of being and things that no longer serve us. It really is. And Seth, your meditations like are really in tune with these shifts and changes, like the themes that you have, the improvis improvisation that you do. It's mm -hmm. like really holding that space to, you know, not, not just be on autopilot or just constantly reacting to what's coming from the news from our devices from social media um yeah. what, what have your thoughts and feelings since you read my mind. just by what you said like 
so those who don't know, we just came out of a meditation and then the three of us are meeting here. And in this meditation, I think both of you have heard me talk about this. Yeah. Usually in all the meditations that we do, I help everybody get into a state of heart and brain coherence where they're not projecting their stress hormones at it. And when you're in that state, this communication starts to happen naturally from the brain to the heart and back again. And mm -hmm. then I also have everybody get, when you get into this state where your heart and brain and your whole body and your whole soul or your life force are all in coherence with itself, then the external coherent fields from the planet, from the celestial systems around, all of that steps in and supports this process but also it's not just like okay everything's coherent and it's fitting together and supporting there's communication happening and you guys are giving voice to that mm -hmm. communication i can't do this like I, you know mm -hmm. i don't know this to the level that you guys do but i can help people get into that state where when you feel it it doesn't matter if you can explain it or not you know it's real exactly I look at it like the like you know the a flower. You can you can talk about the biology of the flower, and I I feel like the the beauty of astrology is because we've been taught so much that isn't based in alchemical laws, cosmic and natural law, or the truth of our you know history and all that we're made of. The astrology like lights up that hidden knowledge about ourselves and about the way the universe is operating and all the different planetary alignments. So it like helps to deconstruct the mind control very much. But like if you're you know embodying the flower and the essence of that property of of what it holds you know it's it's not necessary but you know it's it's a helpful tool but uh it's it's um really helpful in these times but um anybody who's mindful and soul centered they they're just feeling it and they're 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 integrating and they 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 are what the explanation can validate right yeah. um and and when somebody's like having a block or having a tough time, it's like, oh, okay, well, this helps explain it so that maybe won't have as much control over you. But an intuitive, uh, tuned in person and an aligned person can just feel the energy of that. So, you know, it's not like anybody's really missing out, but it's nice to be able to bring words to it in, in a world that has bombarded us with so much that has distracted us away from all this like, what are your thoughts, Raquel? Because you're a fourth generational astrologer. This runs in your family. This must have been, I mean, such yeah. a terrible thing to know. It's such, like, yeah, I, uh, you know, it's, I, I want to say, you know, at the end of the day, regardless if you follow astrology or not, if you understand this, this language or not, at the end of the day, the most important thing we can do is really reach this state of coherence that Seth was talking about. Um, and by the way, Seth, you hold the state so well, so beautifully. You are an embodiment of that. You know, you you really are an example. You're not just talking about it. You really are living it. Um, and it's very beautiful because you can feel it, you know, by, by when you speak. Um, and so I feel like that's the most important thing for all of us because you can know everything that's happening in astrology. But if you can't reach that state, you're still going to feel all the energies and go crazy with it. So at the end of the day, it really is about learning how to integrate all these energies and letting them move through you. You know, when you when you reach a certain level of uh, it's kind of like the image I'm getting is like the, the, you know, in the matrix where all the bullets are coming super fast and he's just like in slow motion, just like right and everything's just going through and it's because he's in a slow motion he can he can just like literally go and 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 pick and choose and move things out of the way and and actually maneuver the energies so it's kind of the same um you know process when we are in coherence we can navigate through these energies in a much easier way now with that being said i personally i'm i'm very extremely intellectual and <laughs> i have a lot of mental stuff that is very active so I, I personally, I thoroughly enjoy understanding the process. And I know that many people also do. Uh, so in this sense, astrology is very beneficial because astrology gives me a very direct and neutral perspective. It's not even about spirituality or traditions or points of views. It is just the truth. It is the truth of the moment. And so astrology to me helps me make sense out of the madness that is happening around me. 
without the coherence aspect, it's not going to do you any good. So they go hand in hand. But astrology really shines that neutral light that is really coming from the cosmos. So astrology to me is a language that gives you perspective. It gives you a map of where you're coming from, where you're going next, and what everything is all about anyway. So with astrology, I don't feel lost in the sense that it's random or what's happening? Oh my oh, gosh, yeah. this is crazy. Something's wrong. No, astrology actually puts me at peace that everything is perfect. And it actually gives me more conviction to live my life in this way. Um, and make the choices that are aligned with the natural flow that is already guiding me. Oh, that's so beautiful. And 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 just the the greater intelligence of the cosmos that we are a part Very of. Very humbling. Very humbling. Yeah. 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 Just being, you know, such a part of the healing of this planetary system and the cosmic alignments and aspects. We're all born into, you know, at a certain time and in unity consciousness are all giving each other something to repair, you know, our DNA to awaken, to um, help each other integrate, to awaken what's dormant um, and, and our own uniqueness and what we've been given, you know, it, it gives us the truth of that. Mm -hmm. uh, and it also, you know, shows us, you know, where it might be easy to fall into um, a negative patterning or some kind of loop or some sort of uh, repeat that, you you might not see the opportunity or the opening um, because you just keep seeing things that reinforce, um, you know, a fear or a trauma, and and you know what 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 outer authority says you should do about it, and 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 it's just like wow, it's really intense. What I love is you know just like Chiron, um, and and just the wounded aspect. It's like the planet is healing itself just like we are. We're recovering from this invasion, this takeover, this overlay of um, inverted systems and dark technologies that have stolen you know, our energy to create artificial timelines. It's like, gosh, it's just like helping us to uncoil from all of that and, and, and return to that true alignment with um, what's organic and what's, what's real. Because the, the hijacking really comes through the psyops and the false flags that leverage these planetary aspects to throw us into a dark story version that mm -hmm. keeps us in the fight or flight or, oh my gosh, you know, what do we do? What do we do? And take this and, and do that. And, and it's our like, oh, awareness oh. of it feeds it. That's the, that's the irony of it all. Our awareness of all those fear-based timelines feeds it and it keeps it going. And, and, and at the same time, all those events that trigger our, our maybe tendency to feed it is where self-knowledge comes and and the reminders of you have treasures to dig into and abilities that will help, which which is all that you need and 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 that's why it's been considered a pseudoscience and it hasn't been available to us when you say because <laughs> they don't want us to to be empowered in that way yeah and it's interesting because chiron is really where the both the the wounded warrior but it's through the poison that he is able to find the medicine so even you know the darkness or the dark timelines and our awareness of it that's where we are given the choice right as creators we have this freedom of choice to choose uh if we are going to use that poison to create a medicine and to find not only the way out, but the evolution that happens as a consequence from that. You know, this is the process of ascension. Ascension is not about disintegrating from a fear-based reality. No, you have to do the work. But it really is, ascension to me, is ultimately about the ascension of consciousness. So this whole trajectory that we're in has been um, set in place for us to, so it can be a catalyst for our ascension of our consciousness, mm -hmm. if we choose. If we choose, yeah. And that's the mindfulness and the coherence is is strengthening that like a muscle, right? Yes. Otherwise it'll atrophy. Otherwise you're 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 looking for strength from outside of you. You're looking for somebody else who you think no is the expert. And not to diminish anybody who's worked really hard in their field to be a resource uh to others and be in service to others. But you know, we know that leading by example or reminding people how to find that within themselves is the ultimate way to guide and lead and so, yeah. So yeah. Seth, I'm curious, do you have like, just out of the top of your head, do you have like one or two tips that you can offer like someone that has experience with that, just 
that people can practice throughout the day or, or things like to kind of shift that, that, that from anxiety into a, a state of coherence. Um, what, what is a tip that you, that you can offer for this? So simple actually, but you know, the first is to be aware that what we think we're trying to connect to all that is blocking that is the illusion that we're not connected we are absolutely at all times connected to this life force, to this soul, to this energy of transformation. And everybody is temporarily projecting this fear that they're not. So you take that into consideration and then slowing your breathing down. It's as simple as this. Yeah. Five minutes on, I mean, five seconds on the inhale. Five seconds on the exhale. And then putting that inner smile on your face or in your mouth if you just do that if you slow your breathing down and put that smile and you make a habit you do it every day as many times as you can remember then suddenly you realize when you're not in it yeah. and when you're in it that illusion that we're separate gone yeah well, there I can feel many people practicing just doing that right now and just notice as you do it, notice how your body just naturally starts to relax. Yeah. That's, it's wonderful. Oh yeah. And, and, and the natural state of like joy, we think we need something to be happy. Yeah. We like we're, we're on a quest for it when in the, in the state of mind in the now, you know, it, it's, it's always there in that alignment, you know, and, and that's where our creativity is most potent. And, uh, and we see things, you know, really manifest and the synchronicities that support, you know, our visions and goals light up a lot more than things that reinforce our doubts, our insecurities and our fears, which we often get through the news. And that's why they play people so much. Cause it's like, well, uh, let's create a trigger event, uh, yeah. based on the historical traumas that we've, uh, implanted in multiple generations of people that, um, have this knowingness to love and, and, and want to thrive and, and want to come together. But it's just like, Ooh, you got amnesia. You don't even remember. And thank God you're sticking your kids in front of the TV. You're making it really easy for us to, um, you know, do something that is so against our nature and, and just letting go of it is the awakening and realizing what's going to emerge, you know, is the beautiful process of, um, you know, what blossoms from whatever dark night of the soul, it's only temporary, you know, and when people get so caught in it, and, and lost in the illusions of it. Um, you know, that's, that's just like a detox. You just flush it down the toilet, keep purging, keep flushing. You know, what's purgatory is purgatory. You just purge, purge, purge. And you won't be like hanging in the middle ground of one, one foot in heaven, one foot in whatever feels like hell on earth. Yeah, I agree. Yeah. You guys are saying it all. It's like the confluence, all of this mixed together, right? Heart knowledge and wisdom, gut knowledge and wisdom. And mind, right? When when our heart and our gut is in alignment with our brain, we're able to make sense of things on all these different layers and levels and dimensions. And that is empowerment for me and many others. We anything we haven't shared, Raquel, about the astrology or stuff, anything you oh, guys you know, I can want to share before forever. we close? <laughs> oh, <I know. laughs> Don't ask me that. <laughs> We do multiple sessions, I'm sure. Oh my gosh. I I mean, there's a lot happening. There is the simultaneous conjunction between the South Node, Venus, and Juno, which I find very synchronistic and a massive focus on. It's almost like this whole year has been building up to this conjunction because uh, the South Node is known for being a point of release. And Venus is the planet of relationships in the sign of relationships, which is Libra. Doesn't it form a harmony yeah, with Jupiter? Huh? I was keep going. Yeah, the connection with Jupiter. Oh, okay. No, and 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 uh, and with Juno together with Juno, which is the asteroid of relationships. So they're all three together during this time, and um, it it really is a culmination of uh, relationship 
events coming up. And ultimately, it's the uh, that exchange of the old models of relationships that no longer serve us, the old mentalities that are being unveiled. And it's just we're just not interested anymore as souls that are waking up um, and ready for a, a new paradigm. So relationships is playing a big part in all of this. And it's in huge focus. That's but what really, were your thoughts on Jupiter? Oh, yeah, just the 17th. Sorry, I didn't mean to jump in like that. Yeah, no, no. Uh, I'm curious. Jupiter uh, with the square to, you know, Saturn has a harmonious aspect on the eclipse day to um, the Venus Libra. So I think, you know, where there's that tension with Saturn, it's like realize that like love is the answer right now, like union and relationship. Yeah. Um, yeah. But it's union with people that are living the new models um because it's just not going to work anymore if we are ready for something new and i'm not i'm not talking about running away from doing the work you know i think if you are in a tough situation you're part of it you know there you too are co-creating that experience for something so this is also about you learning what your role in it all is but you know we're, we're just not gonna it's not compatible anymore if you are already on the path of freedom and if you are in interested in raising your consciousness you're naturally not going to vibe anymore with perhaps people you vibed with for years of your oh, life that are yeah. just not in that path anymore and that's the beauty of like the north node aries and then shifting into you know pisces it's like once those relationships that aren't in alignment move away and and even that pluto dipping back into capricorn you know capricorn mm -hmm. having to do with contracts marriage you know agreements yeah. um what 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 new and fresh perspectives you yeah. know can hold for yourself it's like what what are you going to paint on the canvas of your life now that you've been able to let go of all that and move forward yeah you know? But so, on the same hand, we have a lot of relationships that are compatible, that are being very energized, like we really are supported. Um, and this is an, a very exciting time, actually, for relationships of the new paradigm to come together. We, we need to because we can't do this alone. So absolutely. this is a really pivotal moment of community of people, really like-minded people and souls that are here on the mission to come together like never before. This is like unparalleled. The next, you know, six to nine months is going to all revolve around this. So that by the time in July, when Uranus centers Gemini, I mean, it's it's really going to get stronger. This this momentum of like like minded heart and souls coming together for the mission. Yeah, and that's the real healing. That's what the South Node and Libra and North Node Aries has been about as the growth period of you know humanity with the powerful eclipses. It's like, you know that that you know that coming together and and in that aries you know are are you standing strong in who you are and in doing that um you're not going to compromise yourself anymore just for the sake of the libra qualities of being a people pleaser you know the shadow side of libra just i just going to do it to make that person happy and just want everybody yeah. to be happy it's like aries is like wait a minute i got to take charge in my life make sure i'm moving forward in a direction that you know is going to begin to answer to not negative ego but Aries energy with Neptune, the multidimensional, being accountable for the actions and choices that you're making. Um, where is it coming from? A belief, what you were taught, uh, you know, Saturn being involved. Um, it's just like, wow. And then Pluto, you know, Aquarius, Uranus, Gemini, lots of soul family, lots of soulmate energies, lots of um, that all gathering together. And to me, you know, that's what knocks the parasites out because they've been relying on the patriarchal programs and the imbalance to even feed in the first place. So keeping us in separation. So we won't get strong that way. I know. No. So more. it's, it's not always easy, you know, especially if somebody's hanging on, you know, uh, and doesn't want to let you go. It's like, that's that's a form of addiction you know when love becomes like yeah. anything old paradigm anything old paradigm or relationships that you aren't willing to let go of it's that fear that nobody's going to catch you that you can't catch yourself that source creator is an unconditional love and and these are all old saturn constructs that are just dissolving away mm -hmm. but it's not always easy so you know community it's like i love we talked about i think last time just that, that whole guru or, you know, somebody being 
uh, the one that you follow or listen to, I mean, all that's, you know, dying away. It's like community is going to be more about rehabilitation and supporting one another in this rehabilitation process. Cause we all have something right to, to uh, heal and work. on. Yeah. I always tell people when you are able to connect with this internal state of coherence that we all have access to, they won't ever need to listen to me or anybody else again, because you will be in tune with what is causing this, the source of it. Mm -hmm. And then from there, everything's an outward extension of that manifesting in ways that you're ready to evolve with it. You know, it's powerful. It's exciting. And it's painful. I mean, all there's so all these old systems are creating so much and the world is detoxing it. And like the meditation we just had, when we get ourselves strong and in coherence, our bodies and our energy field literally push out the toxins on their own. We don't have to do that. It does it when we increase the awareness of our spirit, of our connection. And it's beautiful so because now more people are doing this than ever. I, you guys know, I've told you both, like for the longest time, I was like, wow, I'm, I was born at the wrong time. But now that all this crazy stuff is happening, it's like, oh, okay. I love that you just said that, though. It's like, because that's the micro version of what's happening on a macro level when you do that inner work yeah. and uh, and how it pushes out the toxins. Think of all the bioweapons, all the assaults that are constantly at us. But when we hold this frequency, you know, we we, we find our you know self-love, our divine blueprint, our sovereignty and our strength as a prerequisite before we like really maybe find the community or find the soulmate or at least that devotion to that path. So you can tell the difference between a deceiver or a narcissist or whatever. Um, Cause you're not like looking for something to fill a, a, a void. Um, you know, that strength is a frequency that overrides like all the manipulations and all the assaults and weaponry that is used on us. Um, so I love, you know, th that micro macro connection. And, and that's the thing. It's like, Let's just be ourselves, being ourselves is the best thing that we can be. There's nobody outside of us that, that that can tell us how to do that any better than ourselves. And are we around others that allow us to be who we are in an authentic way instead of got to follow the group mind, the hive mind or my way instead yeah. of you know, passing the talking stick and like, what do you think? And, and let's harmonize it. <laughs> exciting yeah. and really intense at the same time but i guess we wouldn't have any other way right exactly exactly <laughs> this is the moment that this is why we were born to be here at this place at this time now yeah yeah well it's so fun to navigate all this with you guys i agree and You're both yeah fun. it'll be interesting with such a heavy emphasis on you know neptune and just one more thing it's like when we see the theater going on on the world stage, certain events that take place, is that even real? Is that even that person? Is it a clone? Is it a body double? Is it this? Is it that? Is it this? Is it that? Um, but it, I also see it as like the rising of the elemental kingdoms and Neptune, you know, like, wow, we have access to so much more of manifestation powers and abilities. Like, you know, where what do we want to draw from, from that incredible resource instead of you know, what's outside of us. And I'm not saying like, don't be invested in, you know, the election or like what's playing out, you know, on the world stage, but where is it all really guiding us? Like Raquel, what do you think? Where does it all guiding us? Don't you think, you know, the, the greatest lesson of all is what's awakening within? We have no other option, but to accept that. It's very beautiful. I think that Neptune on one hand, he he is the planet of uh, the lifting of the veils, of coming to terms with illusions, things that we've been um, lied about, which is very much the case. Even what you said with looking at the news and being like, well, what's real? How much of it really is real? How much of it is exaggerated? How much of it is staged? How much of it is a clone? Like, and we really, we're coming to this point so we can see that we're not sheep anymore. We're not going to be guided by what television is telling us. And then on the other hand, as the, the veils are lifted, which can cause a little bit of, um, how do you say, a, a feeling of um, de desperation, 
you know, that can be one of the shadows of, of Neptune is like that whole drama, like, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me type of, you know, that's one of the, the, the byproducts of the veils being lifted and you taking off the rose colored glasses and you're like, whoa, my goodness, what is this all about? Um, but on the other hand, Neptune is also the number one planet of spirit. Its sole function is to help us transcend the boundaries of the physical dimension and take us to spiritual dimensions. That's the sole purpose of Neptune. So with Neptune so in focus now and this upcoming eclipse in Pisces, you know, falling back to the ruler Neptune um, and next year we're going to have we're going to start the eclipses in, in virgo and pisces it really is that time for us to not only take off the rose-colored glasses but allow ourselves to embrace the spiritual realms in a much more authentic way this is not just about something that is out there or something that is in the bible or in some ancient book with traditions but it really is going to have to become embodied with with um, neptune moving into aries aries is that first sign of waking up right of the body of self so it really is about bringing spirit in the body in the self you know so this aspect of spiritual embodiment is going to be one of the biggest highlights of moving into 2025 and 2026 gosh totally and then constantly checking with the south node virgo what is the body saying what have we what can we learn from the body to move forward into uh you know the spiritual and and that integration process because it's all about the integration of polarity and wow yeah it's going to be quite you know a time and health matters coming up. It's like, it's in your, it's in our hands and mother earth provides us all that we could possibly need our higher guidance and our intuition as well. Yeah. And uh, let's take charge of it. And you not know, just on it really quick on a, on a, on a, on a health note, I, I want to, I want to encourage you, you know, any of you that are having any sort of health issues, even if it's a minor one, even if you're having, you know, like I, for example, I was out of the blue. I had for almost a whole week, my shoulder, something happened. I don't know what happened. And it just like, I couldn't even move my arm at all. Like my, I was like, what, where I, this has never happened in my life. So whether it's something just like temporary or, or something that has been going on for a while, I really recommend you to look up on the internet, the energy meaning for, I usually like to specify Louise Hay because I trust her work. And if you look for Louise Hay and then energy meaning of shoulder for example and 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 then read read about what the energy is and really start to understand your body speaking to you in exactly. different ways you yeah. know and start to really connect the dots things that are uh, actually energy that you're holding on to your body you're literally holding energy that is either stagnant or and your body is trying to tell you you know this you're holding on to this energy this emotion or maybe it was an event that happened so that's you know with the focus on virgo and health and the body uh, that's just an advice that i like to leave with you just really start to read in between the lines instead of just like oh i need this pill to do like really understand what your body's trying to communicate with you. You're going to be surprised at the answers you're going to come into. Exactly. And I think that that is why, you know, Virgo is opposite Pisces, you know, Mercury, body, mind, spirit, integration. Yeah. If Mercury has to do with the mind and the mind influences the body, what are the beliefs that are behind it, which is Neptune? And can mm -hmm. we really be on that spiritual path that nourishes our body, that gives us the unconditional love, that shows us a greater vision um, that we can align with and to also defy what others say is impossible because you know it is the realm of the imagination and if we can imagine it we can manifest it so you know this ease to me is an opportunity to get to know yourself better not to get further away yes. from yourself and Amen. with the help of others of course and finding the right people you're gonna you know it, it won't feel like a burden or an affliction or a disease it'll be an opportunity to um, get you closer to you yeah Beautiful, beautiful, powerful stuff, guys. Yeah. <laughs> I hope the viewers have enjoyed as much as we have enjoyed uh, speaking about this. Um, it's very, it's always such a blessing to meet with you both. Yeah, I agree. You guys are amazing. Yeah. <clears throat> and I just loved your, you know, the meditations and how it's just like so on point. It's like as, as being just such a powerful ally and 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 reminder that like in these moments, 
that we give ourselves. Um, we can we can do this together and and with a lot more grace and ease because I think you know isolation has been a big thing for people and um, mm -hmm. so it's wonderful and amazing to share the space with you guys and talk about this. Mm. Oh, thank you. yeah, thank you. It's when I have this thought in my mind. I'm like, the most severe crime is to become civilized, and we've all done the crime. So now we're doing the time, the inner work. And we are breaking out of this prison of perception that so many now more than ever are realizing we can do this. We can get out of this jail because we mm -hmm. unconsciously consented to so much of this without knowing. And in that knowing, that is what begins to set us free. So do the crime. You got to do the time. The inner work. Yeah. <laughs> That's awesome. All right. Well, take care, you guys. See you next time. Thanks, everybody, for tuning in. Thank you so Thank much. You. We'll be with you next week. I mean, no, next week, no, next month. <laughs> hey, next week would be cool, too. <laughs> Bye, guys. Bye, everybody. Thank you. Happy Love you guys. <laughs> Bye.